We're here with Andrew Hunter, and uh, we're going to talk about tapping out a Japanese yeah. plane blade. Possibly one of the most scary things about owning a Japanese plane blade, but... Uh... The, f the first time I heard about tapping out, I was immediately, <laughs> like, horrified. Yeah. And thinking, well, he, you want me to spend $200 on a plane blade <laughs> and then, and then whack hammer. it with a hammer? <laughs> yes. Uh, but you... You assure me it's it's uh, it's not as scary as it seems. So so the back of a Japanese plane blade uh, is hollowed out, like like we had said, um, and just the narrowest uh, amount is uh, needed for flattening. So um, like it's just on the edges here, along yep. the whole front. Along the whole front as well. Um, pretty narrow on this blade, mm -hmm. um, and then along these edges. The less uh, steel you have to flatten when sharpening, the uh, the sharper and, and the faster sharpening will be. Okay. Um, so you really, there is a benefit to having a, um, a prettier back um, with with, uh, with with less hard steel needing to be flattened, uh, which is why they f hollow it out in the first place. Um, mm -hmm. So if you don't tap out um, and you just um, grind it um, down, you know, this, this hollow will eventually reach the edge of the, uh, the bevel. And, uh, and to, bring that, to bring that flat back, you can grind it on a uh, coarse stone, but that will bring the flats on the sides in, and, and you'll eventually lose the efficiency of a hollow grind okay. um, or, or the hollowed out back. So a brand new high-end blade is just going to be flat right on the edges. Yeah. And yep. just a very little yep. bit on the... And if you're meticulous front. with your tapping out as you sharpen through the blade all the way to here, um, you can maintain that narrow uh, flat. So tapping uh, out isn't just at the beginning? No, setting yeah, up the, 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 life of the, the life of the blade. It's maintenance. Um, and even if you begin without tapping out, which I did when I first got this uh, plane blade 15 years ago, um, I wasn't tapping out because uh, I was scared. Um, <laughs> Uh, but there's, you know, it's never too late to start because eventually as you sharpen the bevel, you're going to run into this hollow. Yeah. Um, and you can either go to the core stone or you can go to the anvil or a block of wood, uh, which I'm now doing. I've, I've got the courage. And, and really, it, it isn't, you know, you can practice on a, on a block of wood. Uh, you just need to be able to direct a hammer blow. Um, so, uh, again, these, are, these blades are constructed with a laminated construction. There's soft steel laminated on top to a thin piece of hard steel on the bottom, uh, which is why we hollow ground the bottom. Um, so it's the soft steel that you want to um, deflect down, and that will push the hard steel um, down only where you need it. So right now, we, we need a little bit more flat right at the middle. Okay. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be hitting the blade uh, on the soft steel. The upper third, you know, say you break it into thirds, the bottom third is the hard steel. The middle starting to get risky, and that top third is is much safer. There's just more of a cushion of soft steel. Oh, right? okay. So towards the top of this bevel here. Yeah, okay. the further away from the hard steel. Okay, um, that's the, a little less scary, right yeah, there. Yeah. So you so you can start there and work your way closer to the uh, hard steel as you get more confidence. Okay. Uh, there are specific hammers with a point, uh, but uh, just a hammer like this, I'll use an edge. Uh, same effect. Uh, and I'm putting it on an end grain block of oak. Uh, you can use an anvil. Uh, the key is to support the hammer below, directly below the hit. Um, okay. And again, taking out vibrations. The hard steel's brittle. You don't want to uh, vibrate it. it. It could crack. There's potential. Um, I have not done that yet, knock on wood. Um, and here I am doing it with the camera running. So. Uh, you want to concentrate where you want to move um, the hard steel down. Um, it's not as violent as I was. No, it, it's tapping out. They, yeah. they they say it really is tapping. And uh, and again, you you do a little bit of tapping and you check on your f make sure it's a perfectly flat uh, you know medium thousand grit stone or so, um, and you'll start to see the scratch patterns. Uh, you'll see a bulge in the hard steel, and that that's where you know you're you're getting it where you want. So you're. You're tapping, going to the stone, yep. checking on the stone, yep. going back and forth. And at a certain point, you're going to know that uh, you've you've bent that hard steel down enough that you can now just go back to your normal flattening routine. 
um, and flatten. And what, what that means is you've brought, you've brought more of that hard steel landing where you needed it and you're not grinding these edges where, where you don't want to in increase that, that flat. Um, so I, ideally, keeping, that, keeping the flats as small as possible is, is best for sharpening. Um, yeah, and you can do it. I, <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's not that scary. No, Thanks. it's not that scary. Thanks for showing us. A little bit. <laughs> You're welcome.